you want to speak to next? Uh, possibly Indira Gandhi. Indira Gandhi, Prime Minister of India. Yeah. Very well. I am here. What is it that you would require from me? Hello, welcome. Um, I uh, I wondered if you would uh, clarify the story about your work in um, soul design. The work in the, within me was just at the time when I took my office. Uh -huh. Because I was un... Um, experienced in political hierarchy. I had done some political work in, in my life up to that point, but this was something very different. Uh, this was of a grand nature, and it required a grand amount of effort and intellect and organization. Um, I was approached in my sleep. I had a, an interesting dream that this was a time of change, that this was a time of great importance, and that I needed to listen carefully to what they were going to uh, offer me. And I knew that the country was in shambles in some ways. Not completely, but in some very important ways, there were many uh, important disconnects that needed to connect back up. And the people were disillusioned, and the, the thought process was that uh, they were going to lose their independence, at least what they felt they had as independence at that time. And so I listened carefully, and they offered me someone that would be of a great help to my mission as a prime minister. So therefore, I considered it for many days. It was not an easy decision. The reason for me is that I do not like the very thought of possession was frightening to me. But also the thought of no help in this position was also incredibly frightening to me. So I went back in. I had not made a decision yet. But I was asleep once again, and they came again to me and said, have you made up your mind? I, I said, no. And they said, well, this is the only opportunity that you're going to have. You have to make up your mind now, or you, are, you will not have this opportunity again. And so I asked many questions. I said, you must let me ask as many questions as I need to ask in order for me to be in any way comfortable with anything of this nature. And they allowed it. Of course, you may wonder what questions I asked. And I would ask if my personality would be altered. I asked if my family would notice 
a great difference. I asked if the if this was the only way that things could move forward and I could be successful. Many, many questions. I finally decided at the end of that questionings that it was to my best interest that I do so. However, I did make, there was this question also, and that was, if I do not like this, can I get out of it? And they said, absolutely. That was the, the final question that I needed answered because if it were something that I could not control or something that I had no authority over as an individual, as a, a person of uh, free will, I would have said no. However, they said, if you wish for us to leave at any point, and there was more than one. It was uh, actually a couple of different beings, but they acted in simultaneous actions so that they seemed like one. But they said, if you wish for us to leave at any point, we will go. But remember this, we will not return. So I agreed with that, and I had them come in. It took me several days to get used to them because their thought processes were far more advanced than mine. Their organizational skills were very different than what I had experienced, but they were in a much vaster, they could do organization in a much vaster way than I could imagine. And this was a saving grace for the country. I would have made small intentional moves that would have been helpful in some areas. Whereas they made large, very inclusive decisions, which I found to be quite amazing. But I got the hang of it and was able to, with their help, bring a country back into some semblance of organization. Bring the people into a much calmer frame of mind because they saw some resolution to major problems, not just the minor ones, but some major problems such as cutting down on uh, warring factions, having the British government back off, uh, things of this nature caused a great deal of relief within the people. Also having um, the leader of the country become a little more understanding of what was going on, because he was oblivious in some ways. So that was the first section of what happened. There was so much more than that, of course. So many, so many, many things. And so much, um, political um, compromise, if you will. It, I would have not been so compromising as um, I would, feel, would have felt that they would feel that a woman compromising was a position of weakness. However, the way that the compromises were made were very strong and very distinct and very much in the favor of India. So therefore, I felt strong still, even during these times when compromise was necessary. It felt right and it felt strong. 
So I was happy for these beings to have helped me. But there was a point when I did let them go. But it was not for a couple of years. But I had learned so much from them that I felt that I did not really need their guidance, but that I had learned how to uh, do it correctly. So I left them, I left them go. But of course, soon after that was my demise, or I was no longer prime minister. Uh huh. So who, who, which beings were theirs? They did not. Uh, give me a name of a species because they said that that would not be necessary, but that they were benevolent and that they were from Alpha Centauri area. Oh, wow. And that they, they were, had watched humanity for a great deal of time, that they were very interested in keeping the planet in a whole state and India was very important at that time to the planet's whole state. I don't know how, but they felt that it was. Um, yeah, I remember in Russia in, uh, in that time, it was, uh, India was big. The yes. opinion of India was big, the friendship with India was big. It was important. Um, and they felt so as well. They saw the hands reaching across the planet to India, and uh, the well-being of India was on the forefront of many minds because there were so many people there. And if India would have fa failed, that means that they would have been overtaken by other, other places and divided, pro pro probably. Right. So now, from your position now, can you see who, which race was this? And is it possible to disclose it? I, I will check with them. Mm -hmm. I do see that it is a species in the Alpha Centauri area. And they are already moving to other areas as well. They have moved to many different places. But they are, um, one moment. Actually, their home was in Alpha Centauri. Their origination was in the Pleiade. Uh-huh. They were from the planet Hara. So they were Tarians. Tara. Tara. We, this planet is Terra. Their uh -huh. planet is Tara. Terrans, Tarans, Tarans, okay. Um, and are they human looking? Are they mammals? They are mammals, but they do not look Exactly like humans, but they do have some human features. I see. Okay, we need to, yeah, pass our invitation to talk to them when, when they're available next time. Yes, they are just now getting known again by people from this planet. They are very benevolent, of course, you know the Pleiadians are one of the groups that are most helpful to humans. And they are coming in that tradition. Thank you. Uh, now, uh, I have, uh, I'm facing the idea that I might be also walking. Uh, so, um, can you look at that and tell me a little more about myself, what I'm dealing with, because I feel uh, I'm connected to certain things which are unusual, but, but uh, I don't have direct knowledge of anything. What would you like me to tell you? Uh, my properties of, of a walk-in. Am I walking or, 
Or how is my soul designed? Are you walking? Yeah, walk in. I uh, walk in. Uh, am I an oh, alien? Is there a walk in. I understand. Um, one moment, and I will check. You do have friends and helpers, but you yourself are an, a an alien born into a human body. You do feel uh -huh. a. You do feel that disconnect from humanity, I know. You're very, very Pleiadian. Uh-huh. And you're at 22%, I believe. Uh, you confuse the soul and the, the genetics. I think these are in, uh, independent things. So the soul could be Pleiadian and genetics can be not. It's, it's, it doesn't have to be the same. Well, yes, but you are 22% Pleiadian. In the genetics, how about the soul? In the soul, let me check. That's a little harder to check. Yes, in the soul, you are Pleiadian also. Uh-huh. But there is some human component since you have human DNA. Uh, no, it goes to like past lives, I guess. You know, if yes. I had many past lives on Earth, I, then I would be more like person. And you had I more past lives in the Pleiades. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah, one of the I did a hypnotic regression, and I went to a past life when I was a, 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 a more like a, a bipedal chicken, like a, more like a human with the chicken features, or. Like like Egyptian gods, god looking at chicken. Yes. Do you know you, what it is? That's a that's a blue avian. Oh really? Ah, I need to talk to them again. But it was more like a chicken than than the blue avian. I wasn't blue but, for sure. There are different different facets of their species, but there it is a blue avian species. Wow, I need to talk to them about that. All right, so um. As a as a human here, what did you uh, did you have any interest in uh, experiences of uh, uh, connection to the spirits and the aliens? I did not originally have any interest in that until the dreams came, and then uh -huh. I became very aware that they existed. And from that time on, then I did have interest in it, and I did have understanding more of what was happening in the outer realms as well as the inner realms. Uh-huh. Any experiences which you would like, would be like uh, in a, in a, in a awake state, did you see any aliens or spirits or? I did see what these, I did see these particular aliens in the flesh. Oh, uh, wow at one point. It was a little frightening, but they told me that they were coming not to be afraid. They told me what they would look, were going to look like. They gave me an image in my head. Uh -huh. And then um, they asked me if I was ready to see them. And when I said that I was ready, then they appeared. I was still frightened. However, it was the only time that I ever saw them in the flesh. And it, was in was a, it was in a private place. It was in a place where no one else could interfere with our meeting. And not even my husband could uh, interfere. So it, I was a little frightened because I was alone. And there was more than one of them. There was three, actually. And, but they told me they were coming in, in that there would be three of them. And they gave me all the information that I needed to know before they appeared. And then they even asked me if I was ready for their appearance. So um, I felt a little safer because they were so polite about it. However, Looking upon them 
was a little frightening. And being uh, that there were three of them and one of me, that was also a little frightening. <laughs> uh, what size were they? Uh, they were taller than me. They were probably uh, six foot two, three, six foot huh? two and three inches tall. Did they have hair? A little bit, yes, but not a lot. What was mostly different about them? The color of the skin. Uh huh. It was um, a slight blue tint. Uh huh. But it also had a slight green tint. Okay. In places also, it was a bluish green. I see. And um, it was not real smooth looking at places especially on the forehead and the and the sides of the head had sort of bumps on them uh-huh but it seemed smooth through the face and i could see some arm and some hands i could not see their feet uh-huh legs what but was the reason for them to to appear they wanted to speak to me um because it was the day that i was to uh, for them to take control. Oh, it was before taking control. I see. Yes. Uh, was it soon after you assumed the office? Yes, very soon. Within weeks. Uh-huh. All right. So when, when they were in charge, um, how much of uh, activity do, did you have in your body? Did you, like, uh, were you present once in a while? Yes, I was present. That's why, um, that was one of my questions, would I be present? And they said, yes. What I felt was the brain activity more than any other action. They, they actually worked with my body as much as they could. I felt some actions in the body, but they were not great. They felt, I felt sometimes that they were like I was pregnant and they were kicking me a little bit, but other than that, it was more of the mental action that was memorable. I remember that uh, the thought processes changed and at certain periods of time, certain thought processes would kick in that were absolutely not something that I would have thought of or uh -huh. I was aware of even. They were uh -huh. aware of things in the country and in the political political status that uh -huh. I'm not even aware of. And so they made me aware of things that were necessary to handle at that time and be aware of at, at that time. And so I would immediately look into that thought process and find that they had already, uh, they had already uh, made some plans but they did not they did not get ahead of me uh -huh, they, uh -huh. they tried to keep with me as much as possible however uh -huh, uh -huh. um they had to uh throw thoughts at me that were not in my awareness so that i would look into them and then be aware of their next move wow so it looks like there was a team working for you Yes, there were a couple, yes, at least a couple in me. There, three of them appeared, but I think only two of them were to enter me as my help. Wow. So they would enter and leave, or how would it work? No, they were to stay there until I told them to leave. Both at the same time, two souls in one body? Actually, three if you count mine. Uh-huh. But yes. But it wasn't like I had many souls. That wasn't the feeling that I had. The feeling that was there was that there was two minds. Uh -huh. It was my mind and another mind. That's how it felt. It felt like there was an, a, a mind outside of my own that was creating incredible thought processes that needed to be thought of so that things could proceed and succeed. Wow. Yeah, give me an advice. I'm uh, now choosing a, 
uh, a name for my uh, non-profit uh, organization to raise money for my research. And I'm sort of a little scared to name it too radically. So it would, uh, I don't want to attract too much of uh, attention of skeptics and, uh, and uh, other restrictive mechanisms of the country. So one is uh, very traditional, it's called electro, uh, uh, the Foundation for Electrobiology or Electrobiology Foundation, it would be very traditional. But it would be not very exciting for the, for the donors because it sounds too dry. And another one would be DNA Resonance Research Foundation. It's a little more, uh, more unusual, and it is uh, indicating that I'm working in an area which is not mainstream. And, but I f I'm afraid that that would might attract too, mu too much of negative attention from, uh, from the mainstream uh, restrictive places, and uh, I'm not sure which one to choose. I like the second one better. Uh huh. Um, and there could be even other names as well, but the second one is more uh, thought-provoking, absolutely. So do you think it is, uh, I'm asking you because you know more of the, of the restrictive sides of the government. Would it be dangerous for me to have the foundation which is called DNA Resonance Research? It sounds like I'm doing something very, so my main fear no, is that it doesn't sound that radical to me, actually. Uh -huh. Okay. All right. Uh, I mean, there's the the research for the energies of DNA. Yeah. Um, because uh, in the past, like it was, I think maybe 15 years ago, when I first stepped out on this road, I was visited by a professional skeptic. And for, at that time, I was uh, uh, a too little fish to be bothered with. But uh, if now I become a bigger fish, then they might start, you know, pay paying attention because it's still a fringe science, and they, you know, the, there is a lot of professional skeptics who hunt for yes. Uh, outsiders well, let, me tell you and this. Uh, let me tell you this: there is not a single, a single person out there that is doing good work that is not put under a microscope by someone. Mm -hmm. There's not a single day that went by that I did not get a scandalous letter from someone telling me that I didn't know what I was doing. There wasn't a single day that went by that threatened my life because I was a woman in high position. There wasn't a single day that went by that I had to, that I did not have doubts. So therefore, if you are doing something worthwhile, you will come up against opposition always. There will be much opposition before there is acceptance. So do not worry about it. Let it pass. <laughs> I, if I would have let these things bother me, I would have never accomplished a thing. Uh-huh. All right. So do not worry about that. Even if they say they're going to close you down, they said that to me as well. They said, we're getting you out of office. We'll have you out of there in 10 days. That did not happen. Remember, God has his hands on the situation, and he knows what is going on. So therefore, do not let these people of opposition bother you in the least, because that is what they are there for. They are there to discourage you so that your mission does not get accomplished. So therefore, please, just disregard them as much as possible and move forward boldly because this is what you must do. Okay, well, that's a good advice, thank you. You're welcome. You must understand, there was not a day that went by that scathing letters did not come to my attention and things of threats and uh, very negative things would come into my um, office and tell me that I was did not know what I was doing, but I had to disregard them and move forward. Uh huh. Nice lesson.
So I also would, would, would like to have uh, some uh, outside intelligence to help me and uh, to come and give me um, advice uh, to the area of areas which require my attention and 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 um, some information which I, otherwise I wouldn't I wouldn't be able to get. I think I do get some of that, but I think the more the better. Uh well, that's just up to God, really. But there are those around you that would be interested in giving you more information when the time is right. Uh-huh. Thank you. And believe me, there is a time coming when things are aligning for all those that have missions for the alignment to happen that their greatness will be seen in one way or another. Oh, one more thing. Um, I think um, I might have met you in my past life. It is possible. Uh, I uh, I was told there was a, a white woman, uh, a close friend of Mahatma Gandhi living in his ashram. Yes. You met... Uh, you probably met me when I visited. Possibly. And also you, 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 you met, uh, did you meet Yogananda? I met Yogananda, yes. Wow. Interesting. And you met uh, Ananda Maima. I know there is a video when you visited Ananda Maima. Yes, yeah, so I... I've, that was a fascinating visit. Uh-huh. Yes, I enjoyed it very, very much. And you apologize that you don't have too much time, that you visit her after, like, you have, will have more time. Yes, I, I, I thought she was a fascinating individual, and I uh -huh. really enjoyed uh, being in her company. She had much wisdom for me, and, and actually was very complimentary and many points but what i found amazing about her was that i thought her to be a greater kind of woman than i was in the in wisdom she had a vast amount all right did you meet ganesh after, after like after you left the body of course ganesh um, Ganesh appears in many forms around the universe. Uh huh. And um, and is beloved. Your... Yes, uh -huh. very beloved. <laughs> and uh, leaving your body was it a good timing for you to leave the body? It was the time that was chosen. Yes. Do you, do you regret uh, to live this way? No. I needed to do the things that I did. I was happy for all the help that I was given. I was able to create um, a unified state out of India as much as possible for that time period and was very happy to have been of service. Right. Did you meet Golda Meir? Did I meet her? Yeah. No, I did not. Uh huh. Uh, who, who should should would, would you who would you recommend I could invite to to meet like through Jim uh, through channeling? Any more spirits which you would recommend? I would. Well, there are so many out there that have great wisdom and understanding. There are some you've never heard of, and others that came to your planet and were very much a part of changing history thousands and thousands of years ago that their name may not even be in your history books, or, or in fact aren't in your history It shouldn't books. be a limit because you can just give me a name and I would invite. They should come just through I the name. Seth was one of them. Seth. Uh -huh. Seth from yeah, the I, I read a lot of Seth. Through yeah. Jane, Jane Roberts, I think, channel Seth. Yes, it's actually pronounced Set. Set, but, yeah, huh? And uh, let's see. 
Anubis was interesting. Anubis. I, I do like the Egyptian era. It had uh -huh. a lot of great beings there that had uh, interesting and amazing thought processes. Um, let's see, but there was also many Greeks and Atlanteans as well. So I could name off uh, the priest in um, Atlantis named Porion. Was, Porion? Porion was very interesting to me. Um, he was, I do not know if he's ever channeled to anyone. He was rather a private person, but when he spoke, it was of great authority. So he was an interest to me and had a great deal of wisdom and, and honor among the people. Uh, wonderful. Thank you for the recommendation. Uh, the noise which uh, you can hear, it is military plane uh, flying around uh, practicing. That's just a reminder where we live on which planet. Yes. <laughs> All right. Uh, thank military, you very much. Yes, the military surrounds your, the, your entire United States is surrounded by military. Far out in the ocean, a few miles. You, you will notice all around the shore there is military. Uh-huh, and underwater and underground and above the ground, everywhere. Yep. Everywhere is military, yes. <laughs> well, I, I, I don't have an opinion on it because I don't like military, but I, I know if that was not there, then it would be someone else. It would be even worse. Yes, that is true. <laughs> um, uh, on, on that positive note, I would like to invite the next speaker, if possible, uh, Rosalind Franklin. And thank you very much. It was uh, actual fun to, to talk to you and uh, to connect. Yes, thank you. I enjoyed our conversation very much. Have a wonderful day. You too.